Uh, good evening again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the third webinar uh, for session 21-22, organized by the Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee of Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. There were two previous webinars. Actually, the participation was quite good. And I hope uh, uh, this webinar will be another successful event for this year. I am very much thankful to this audience for their continuous patronage. Uh, the topic today by engineer Manoj is a widely spoken subject today. And I am thankful to engineer Manoj Tareka for accepting our invitation as the speaker today. Um, once again, I, I am thankful to the organizing committee and I hope you all will have a, uh, a beneficial session uh, to gain some knowledge on, on solar uh, PV utilization. Thank you very much. With that, I will invite uh, engineer Ishan Ranganath to give the introductory uh, introduction about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shaman. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, engineers, Ranganath, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Engineer Mohan. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am Ishan Ranganath from uh, Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee of ISL. Today, our topic is about, uh, as Mr. Samant, our chairman, uh, introduced. It is solar PV energy storage and EV charging solutions with grid support functions for buildings. I think that is a very much trending topic at the moment uh, in the current industrial situation. So uh, let me uh, brief you on the uh, insight of our topic today. Renewable energy integration for commercial and industrial buildings tend to become a trending topic, as I explained earlier. So uh, while searching for these solutions, energy storage systems are found to be a good, uh, good and better option with the smart features available in solar inverters for its support functions. So uh, uh, without having further delay, uh, I will uh, keep that part to explain uh, by Mr. Manoj Taraka. So uh, let me introduce our guest speaker today, engineer Manoj Taraka, who is a graduate, uh, graduate from uh, University of Marotua in engine electrical engineering. And he is the manager, Sri Lanka for FIMA, who are the official manufacturer for FIMA uh, solar inverters and EV chargers. He is having more than eight years of experience in designing and integration of energy storage and solar power systems. Furthermore, he has also involved in many solar rooftop and energy storage projects while supplying solar inverters, batteries, and EV charging solutions. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's, uh, uh, let's hand over the session to engineer Manoj Taraka. And before that, I have uh, one special announcement to be made. Uh, this is a uh, we, uh, this is a uh, uh, we are having a Q&A session, live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. While the presentation is going on, you can post your questions to the moderator through chat. Today our moderator is Engineer Mahesh Udayang. You can find the chat option at the bottom of your screen. If you are logged from a laptop, depending on the time, we will direct your questions to the speaker at the end of the presentation. So uh, with that announcement, uh, we can uh, move on to the presentation. It's over to you, uh, sir, Mr. Manoj. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Ishan. Uh, hope I am audible to everyone. Uh, I think you can confirm that yes. I am audible. Yes. yes, OK, yes. thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone. So, so I will start the presentation. Hope you are able to see the screen also. Yes, it is. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, 
building services engineering section of the committee of IESL uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, and uh, thank you for the, all the participants for joining this event. So today we are going to discuss about the uh, currently uh, very trending hot topic in Sri Lanka as well as the uh, worldwide. Uh, this uh, solar PV energy storage and EV charging solutions. So uh, most of the people are talking about this solar PV uh, integration with energy storage and the EV charging solution. But also we are included about uh, more than that. Uh, that means the grid with integration of these uh, power systems along with the grid support functions. So. Our agenda for the today's session will be, I will uh, give a brief introduction about the overall uh, picture of this. And uh, we will see what are the solar PV systems uh, we are using and uh, uh, how we are going to interact with the grid uh, with the integration of uh, solar PV system. And uh, what are the energy storage uh, terminologies available and how we are going to use uh, these uh, applications. And then we will talk uh, when uh, we, along with the energy storage, we will introduce about the battery technologies currently available in Sri Lanka as well as uh, worldwide. Then later we will talk about the electric vehicle charging solutions and their applications and uh, how the EV also can support to the grid. So starting with the introduction. Uh, so why this uh, topic came into the came into play because uh, in, in globally, uh, everyone is planning to reduce the global warming and protect the environment for the future. Uh, as you can see in the data I mentioned here that uh, CO2 percentage is still increasing, uh, which result in the global warming also uh, increasing situation, as well as the uh, along with the power current power. Uh, energy sources we are using that uh, which result in ocean acidification and that result in uh, rise in the sea level while decreasing the ice glaciers. So these were discussing uh, for more than uh, decades and now it is finding that uh, what are the solutions we are, are making for for these two topics currently we are discussing the for the power generation uh, purposes. So instead of using traditional uh, CO2 em emission uh, power sources. Currently, everyone is looking for the renewable energy sources, as well as for the transportation, uh, more than uh, using the in, uh, internal co combustion engines uh, that now glo globally it is moving to manufacturing of uh, electric vehicles. So <clears throat> when it comes to finding the uh, reliable and uh, appropriate uh, energy uh, energy sources it is uh, not easy actually we have to consider three more important factors as mentioned uh, here one is the energy security whether the power supply source is reliable so uh, so when it comes to the renewable energy some someone can say that the solar power going to be disappear when the cloud comes or something and also wind power is not available all the time so so what are the solutions we can integrate to those systems uh, if we are only considering about the renewable? And also we need to consider about the economic productivity. So what is the uh, growth and demand and the price factor? Price factor. So whether the renewable energy is very expensive or other uh, energy sources are expensive. So currently that uh, more than those two things, currently we are more focus, focusing on the other factor, which is uh, environmental impact. So the car, reduce the carbon emissions. So even though we consider those environmental impact, so when we are going to integrate the renewable energy sources, also we have to consider the land and water use. So whether when we are going to integrate uh, large scale solar power system uh, for ground mounted projects, so much, a lot of lands will be used even for the floating solar power system and also hydropower systems uh, when we consider it as a renewable energy source so, so how much water is going to be used so based on these th three factors we have to consider what are the optimum energy solutions uh, uh, which are suitable when we are considering the sri lanka situation so involving this 
three parties we need to uh, find uh, the the best possible uh, technologies for the power sources and uh, generating the policies accordingly to cater to the market while reducing the risk and uh, mobilizing the capital so with these graphs you can see uh, how the renewable integration is happening globally uh, or when we consider from 2014 to 2020 so solar pv energy integration integration has increased by uh, more than 100 gigawatts so same as uh, no uh, much more improvement for other power sources uh, except the wind power so, so you can see with these graphs, the people are more focusing on integration of uh, solar PV system as the uh, reliable energy source uh, while con considering the environmental impact. So same as for the energy storage, you can see from 2019 to 2020. So mainly that uh, battery energy storage is getting increased by uh, 4.6 percent to 6.9 percent that is also uh, again with the lithium ion uh, battery storage because it is fine as the uh, low power density and uh, other uh, high uh, beneficial features when compared to other electrochemical storage solutions uh, like uh, lead acid batteries and nickel cadmium batteries such things Also, from the electric vehicle point of view, that most of the countries are increasing, increasing their market share uh, for the electric vehicles by reducing the usage of other vehicles. Uh, so mainly European countries, uh, as an example, Norway has now reached about 75% of uh, market share for the electric vehicles. So worldwide also, it is now it is about 5% of population uh, has uh, taken the market share for the electric vehicle. So now we can we will see about the solar power systems. So usually that uh, integration of solar power system has started with the grid tight system. Uh, grid tight system means the uh, we will have a solar power solar panels installed in our building home or the ground mounted project along with the solar inverter which converts to dc to ac power uh, and supply to the home loads uh, if we have excess energy we can uh, supply to the grid and uh, we are using the energy meter there which will calculate uh, how much uh, we have imported from the grid and how much we have exported to the grid so it has in, uh, in started with the grid type system. Now there are some concerns. Now, for the solar inverter to work here, uh, there should be a reference point uh, available uh, with the solar PV system from the AC output side. That means the so, solar grid order we can use as a diesel generator also. So it must be present uh, the grid in order to work the solar, uh, solar inverter in a grid type system. So if there is no grid, then uh, there will be a power in interruption from the solar inverter. So even though in, in the daytime, if there is solar power is available, but the grid is not available, we are unable to supply to the home load. So in this application. So other one is uh, off grid system where the grid power is not available. We can use uh, this system integration of solar PV panel and the solar inverter. So here, additionally, we will have to use a uh, battery system because the solar power is not available during the daytime and also it is subject to the fluctuation based on the cloudy conditions. So additionally, uh, we, have, we are using a battery bank as an uh, additional power source here. So hybrid uh, system is the uh, combination of uh, both the above systems uh, grid tight and uh, off grid system. So, additionally, uh, more uh, in addition to the grid tight system, uh, they are we are installing a battery bank. So, uh, in addition to the off grid system, uh, they are we can consider grid is available, diesel generator or the uh, national grid. So, the inverter we can program to run based on the power source availability. Uh, 
so we can decide uh, what will supply power uh, during what time like uh, during as an example during daytime solar pv energy will supply to the home loads if they are uh, as excess energy it will use to charge the batteries so the batteries also fully charged then we have excess energy we can uh, program the inverter to uh, feed the uh, excess energy into the grid so this is the hybrid system So installing a, a single solar PV system at our home or our building, we can consider it as a nano grid. So when we have several power sources uh, supplying power to the several uh, ho home, several houses or several uh, location lots, so we can consider it as a micro grid system. So, so such several micro grid system will uh, result in a mini grid. So this mini grid will finally uh, will result in forming a smart grid in future. So now we will discuss about the, the problem with the grid, grid interaction uh, for the current uh, solar PV system as per the current scenario. So currently uh, the main problem is the maintaining the grid uh, stability while integration of uh, solar PV systems. Uh, now it is it has increased the integration of solar PV system. Now there is a problem with the maintaining grid stability. That means a grid voltage. So installing the solar PV systems uh, now has uh, during the daytime actually there is uh, lesser load when compared to the night time. So during the daytime only the solar power will be produced produce and feed into the grid. So during this time, it now at uh, several locations, even in Sri Lanka, we have experienced that uh, that grid voltage tend to increase now in order to protect the uh, other loads. It, uh, the grid utility service provider has limit this uh, uh, grid over voltage limit to 244. So even though the nominal voltage is uh, 230 volt. So for this case, actually from the customer point of view, we can see his uh, solar power generation curve. So he is going to lose uh, uh, actually many solar power generated from his solar PV system during the daytime. So because uh, during the daytime, it will generate more solar energy. So uh, during the, that time also, uh, that uh, grid voltage increasing issue is uh, tend to happen. So because of this, the uh, customer uh, has problem with loss of uh, his power generation from his solar power system. From the other hand, actually it happens uh, because in order to protect his uh, loads, uh, even though even his loads as well as his neighbor's loads is going to protect with this uh, limitation. So from the grid supply, utility, uh, utility service provider uh, point of view, they are they have the responsibility for uh, balancing the supply and demand uh, for the uh, national grid. So they are limiting this uh, feature in order to maintain the grid stability. From the other hand, uh, because of this uh, problem, they, they are going to, uh, they, are, they will be getting a lot of customer and uh, complaints from the customer side as well as from the installer side. So actually, the, is there a, is there any solution for this? Yes, uh, we have several solutions uh, we are going to propose in the next few slides. So, so this is the current scenario that we are facing. So, uh, so in order to uh, control this situation, actually that uh, now, uh, now most of the solar inverters have these uh, grid support functions. So here listed uh, in this slide, the anti island but that's a usual uh, protection feature available for any of the solar inverters and low and high voltage right through. So this is the one we are going to uh, limit the grid over voltage from the high voltage right through uh, function. Uh, and also same as the voltage, we are going to uh, control the frequency and uh, RAM control and also specified fire factor. So this, uh, these five uh, features mostly available on any uh, solar node actually. Now for, in order to control the situation more, 
So we have to use some advanced technologies which are available with the uh, last two functions, reactive power compensation as well as the active power control in order to uh, control this uh, over voltage function and uh, let the uh, customer to have more power generated from his uh, uh, solar power system while uh, allowing to maintain the grid stability for the utility service provider. So let's discuss uh, this one by one. Uh, first one is uh, anti-aligning protection here in order to protect uh, from the grid side uh, with the integration of solar PV system. It must uh, cease energizing uh, within two seconds if, if the solar inverter detects an aligning situation from the grid side. So, Usually, we are tend to operate the in under nominal voltage in Sri Lanka. We consider as two thirty volt as the nominal operating load. So, if the voltage increase, so we have put limited if that increase to two forty four, then we can limit to cut off the volt uh, out, uh, output power in order to uh, control the grid voltage. That is also from available from the low voltage side also. This then we can decide based on this uh, setting these parameters at uh, what range the solar inverter shall operate to uh, while maintain maintaining the grid voltage in the given range. Same as the voltage, uh, we also put the limitation for the grid frequency from the uh, over frequency side as well as the uh, uh, lower frequency side. Also, we can control the uh, ramp rate. That means uh, how that uh, from the beginning of the inverter, when in inverter start to supply uh, power to the grid, so how it should increase. So we can lower this rate or we can increase the rate. Also, that is available with the many uh, grid standards. So we can control this rate because if it is increased rapidly, so there will be a problem with all again with the maintaining the uh, grid stability. So we, we can set from the solar inverter to uh, while controlling this ramp rate. Also, we can ask the solar inverter to operate at a specified power factor. That is, uh, if there are some uh, reactive power uh, loads are available with, uh, in the system, so we can ask the solar inverter to uh, operate at a particular power factor, even though the, the uh, solar inverter operate more efficiently at uh, zero reactive power. So if there are some loads which generate reactive power, so we, we can uh, program or say the inverter, solar inverter to operate at a particular uh, power factor uh, in order to control this situation. So we discussed these things, uh, some uh, which are available with many of the solar inverters. Now we will discuss about how to control the active power in order to control the uh, grid voltage. So currently, uh, if the no any uh, that we previously mentioned that uh, uh, low and high voltage right through we can set the upper limit of the grid voltage and the lower limit of the grid voltage. So if that means the active power hundred percent here from the x axis we can see the uh, grid voltage percentage from the nominal voltage. So if there are no such parameters were set that inverter will be operate at the maximum power output. Uh, uh, despite of the uh, grid voltage. So this is a problem where is a protection feature. Uh, there are some uh, voltage sensitive loads may be available uh, at the customer's premises or the neighbor premises. Uh, there will be a, a problem for the, those loads if we let this happen. So as a result of that, we can ask uh, to invert uh, operate at the maximum power output up to a certain level. We are currently we are putting that as a 244. So if we have a, a 10 kilowatt inverter, we can let the inverter to operate at the maximum power output, means the 10 kilowatt until the voltage is to 244. Then it will, uh, we can ask to cut off the inverter output if the voltage is the top 244. So similarly, uh, as an advanced solution actually, we can we can we cannot uh, decide that what is the uh, what rating that has uh, led the voltage to expand 
go beyond the uh, limited point. Suppose we have a uh, 10 kilo inverter installed at our site. Now the when the inverter reach that uh, 10 kilowatt, that voltage reach the 240 volt. That means our cutoff voltage. So that uh, then inverter will totally shut down uh, and uh, cut off all the 10 kilowatt AC output from the system. Uh, so that is a very much loss to a customer. So we so if we can ask in order to if you are reaching the 10 kilowatt at the 244 volts, uh, so why don't you operate at 9 kilowatt without uh, exceeding this grid voltage? So such things we can do. We can uh, arrange. Uh, to solar inverter to operate at the curve like this. So we can this set this point to make this curve. So based on the voltage increase, that power is going to reduce. So this will allow the, this will result in uh, minimizing the loss of power generation to the customer while maintaining the uh, grid voltage in the stable, stable limit. So same as the active power control, we also can compensate the reactive power, uh, whether we can supply or absorb reactive power from the system in order to control the voltage. So we can adjust these parameters from the solar inverter uh, in order to control the grid voltage while uh, allowing to maintain the grid voltage and the uh, good operating range. So usually traditional solar inverter which uh, converts the DC power into the AC output, uh, AC power output in order to supply to the loads and uh, if you have excess power in order to uh, feed into the grid. With this, this uh, previously mentioned uh, smart features of the solar inverters, we can also uh, reduce the loss of power generation to the customer while maintaining the grid disability on behalf of the utility service provider. So it is in uh, globally as well as in Sri Lanka. Now it is tend to use more smart solar inverters other, other than the traditional solar inverters. So now let's we talk about the energy storage because uh, other than uh, that or again, in the previously mentioned uh, voltage control procedures, uh, still we are losing uh, some uh, solar power generated in our system. So with this energy storage integration, we can uh, store this excess power uh, limited from these features uh, to store in our in the battery bank, and then we can use this uh, stored energy during the uh, peak hours at night. So again, it is going to help for the utility service provider for reducing the uh, peak demand from their system. So based, in, based on where we are going to install this battery bank, that there are several topologies available for the energy storage solutions. So what, first one is the, if the uh, DC from the PV panel, we are going to charge the batteries. Uh, then the, this charger booster and the inverter function, inverter, both, all three models are available in a single unit. We call it a hybrid DC couple system. So here the battery bank installed again inside the uh, inverter we are going to use for this system. So if you are using a, currently in the market available, uh, they are called the MPPT charge controller. We are using solar panels to charge the batteries directly through the uh, charge control. And uh, there is a separate uh, grid type uh, solar inverter available in the system. Then for this kind of system, we say it is a PV coupled system. So suppose we are going to install the battery bank from the AC side with the separate battery inverter uh, installed after the uh, usual grid type inverter. So we call it the AC coupled system. So all three technologies are available currently for, the, for integration of energy storage for the uh, solar PV system. So why we are going to use this uh, energy storage? Because uh, here we can see from the blue line, uh, that's the uh, load curve. Uh, so currently during this hours after 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., we are getting the uh, peak load demand. 
and the solar power generation is uh, mentioned uh, through the red line. So during daytime, actually, we can, as mentioned earlier, we can store this uh, excess energy for the batteries, and we can use this uh, stored, ten stored energy in the battery to our loads during the night time. So this will let uh, the utility service provider to uh, reduce the peak demand during night time. So that is means for a, a good sunny day, if you have designed the solar PV system capacity as well as the battery capacity in order to operate in this uh, mentioned curve. Suppose we have a cloudy day, so we will not have uh, sufficient power stored in the batteries to use uh, fully during the night time. So sometimes after uh, the battery uh, will be fully discharged, then we will have to use uh, grid power or the uh, diesel generator in order to supply for the balance uh, available loads during the late night. So with this energy storage uh, solar PV application, we have currently several energy policies available. Uh, one is zero injection mode. That means we can ask the solar PV system uh, not to feed into the grid just to uh, supply to the uh, home loads. Or we can ask in order to use, an, uh, in, uh, in order to operate under self-consumption algorithm. Here I have mentioned uh, what is the self-consumption algorithm and how it operates. So during the morning, solar PV energy uh, starts supplying. So during this time, we, we all the solar PV energy generated from the solar PV system will be used for the home loads. So when the solar energy getting increased, so excess energy we will be used to charge the batteries uh, while supplying to the home loads. So when the solar PV energy again getting increased and uh, now we have excess energy and also batteries are also fully charged. So we can then use some loads. Suppose we have electric vehicle at our home, so we can trigger relay and let us to operate that load kind of EV charger to operate at this day. If we don't have such loads, then we have batteries also fully charged. So we have excess solar PV energy generated from our system, then we can let this excess energy feed into the grid. So when the cloud comes or during the evening time and when the solar PV energy is low, so battery also again going to supply along with the solar PV system in order to cater to the home loads. So during the night time when the solar PV energy uh, the, are not available, batteries uh, continue to supply to the home loads. And when the battery also uh, fully discharged, solar PV not available, only that time only we will uh, allow supply to the home loads from the grid. So this is the self-consumption algorithm. Currently, hybrid systems are uh, programmed to operate uh, under this policy. So now, after the energy storage, we will uh, talk about the battery technologies. So starting with the uh, Nickel-cadmium batteries. Uh, so it is started uh, worldwide since 1899. So, but there is a problem uh, with uh, there is a material called cadmium is uh, find, found to be a very toxic uh, chemical. So therefore, this uh, usage of this nickel-cadmium was limited uh, most in the most of the country. But still, we can see uh, since it has a good uh, energy density, uh, most of the power stations as well as the substations, uh, there are still these nickel cadmium batteries are being used. So since the cadmium was found to be a toxic material, uh, then the, most of the manufacturers has removed the cadmium uh, usage and introduced some other variant uh, in place of the cadmium, uh, like uh, hydrogen and the metal hydride. So these batteries mostly uh, uh, used in the hybrid electric vehicles. Currently, we can see most of the Japanese electric vehicles uh, use the nickel metal hydride uh, batteries. 
So other technologies, uh, lead acid batteries, this is uh, widely used because lead is available uh, in most of the uh, countries and also it is a cheaper solutions fund. Uh, so it started uh, in globally in 1859 uh, and also there are some several technologies available. AGM is the absolute gas mask type that is mainly used for the uh, vehicle batteries as well as the UPS uh, applications batteries. Then there is a gel type battery we call that is used for the temperature controlled environment when the temperature is going to increase in the site. So gel type is preferred for the lead acid battery application. So when it comes to the solar kind of application, we, we, there is a, a solutions called tubular batteries. So this uh, other AGM battery we can't use uh, for cyclic application means uh, we can use only for the standby application. For the cyclic application, if you use AGM type battery that the lifetime is going to be reduced because the battery lifetime actually it is based on the uh, cycle life. So then we have a cyclic application like solar. So we shall we must use the tubular type lead acid batteries in order to obtain the good service life. Also, there is another uh, battery technology for the lead acid batteries available as a plant A type batteries. So these batteries are widely used in the standby application for the long life in uh, mainly in the power stations. So the problem with the lead acid batteries is the sulfation if it is going to uh, discharge uh, low since the depth of discharge is uh, more than 60%. So there is a problem with the sulfation at the negative plate of the lead acid batteries. So now the manufacturers has provided the solution for that also. Now they have introduced carbon-based uh, material for negative plate. So that will result in reducing the sulfation uh, even though it was discharged up to the 70%. Uh, so we can for the lead carbon batteries we can obtain more than 3500 uh, uh, cycle life even at the depth of depth of discharge up to 70 percent for usual uh, lead acid batteries if we have discharged 70 percent uh, so the battery's life will be uh, less than thousand uh, cycles something something so that is also again getting increased uh, that's a good solution for the lead acid batteries uh, problems, that sulfation problem, that lead, lead carbon batteries now widely used for the application which, you, which any, uh, previously used the lead acid battery technology. So other widely used uh, technology for the energy storage, especially for the solar application is the lithium ion batteries because lithium metal has the lowest density, but uh, manufacturers find uh, some other, for the other uh, iron, several iron materials were found, but now mostly use the uh, ferrophosphate as the iron because it has some protects, protective features uh, other than the other iron materials uh, used uh, initially. So when it comes to the lithium ion battery service life, actually uh, it cannot operate below a certain voltage. That means a cutoff voltage. If we discharge the battery below the cutoff uh, voltage, so, uh, when we go into recharge the battery, there, that will be a dangerous thing we can do because there can be an explosion of no fire if you are going to recharge, uh, recharge a dead lithium ion battery. So we need to have use uh, protective features along with the lithium ion batteries if we are going to uh, use this technology for the uh, energy storage or any other application. So that's why that uh, for the lithium ion batteries, uh, so along with the lithium ion batteries, there is always going to use a BMS, battery management system or battery monitoring system. So without that, uh, we any manufacturer do not recommend to use the lithium ion battery without a BMS. So what does BMS do? It has some monitoring features available. It uh, continuously monitor the voltage uh, of the total battery and as well as the individual cells and the temperature. 
during the charging process, temperature monitoring is uh, very important to avoid uh, fire and explosion risks. And also it monitors the state uh, of charge. So we can uh, monitor and uh, display this data uh, in our monitoring portal and uh, the depth of discharge. Also, we can see the state of health. Uh, so this widely available with the electric vehicle batteries. Uh, so it is going to uh, monitor the state of health also and state of power and pool and flow. If we are using a separate uh, force pooling mechanism for in order to pool the lithium ion battery, so that pool and flow also can be monitored monitored through the BMS. And uh, charging and discharging current also can be monitored with this BMS thing. So BMS is. Uh, not only used for the uh, monitoring purpose, it is also used for the protection uh, purpose as well. It will protect the battery from the overcurrent during the charging and discharging and over voltage uh, and under voltage and over temperature and uh, ground fault or leakage current detection. So, so BMS also monitor this voltage current temperature as well as it has the functions available for the protection features. Uh, against this overcurrent, over voltage, and over temperature issues uh, for the when we are going to use especially lithium ion batteries. So, in addition to above mentioned things, uh, battery parameters when we are going to uh, design a battery system for our energy storage, we shall consider about the cell battery, battery bank, uh, and the battery capacity. Or which is whether it is sufficient or we need to add more to our system and the charging and discharging rate. So even for the lithium ion batteries, it, it allows high uh, charging uh, current for in order to charge the batteries. For other batteries, uh, it is less, less suppose for the lead acid batteries, uh, we have a hundred ampere hour capacity lead acid battery we can only charge this battery at um, uh, 10, amp 10 amperes, so maximum 20 amperes. Uh, when it comes to the same capacity lithium ion battery, for a 100 days battery, we can charge the battery at the 100 amps also. So based on that, based on the battery capacity we are going to use, we shall uh, consider about this charging and discharging rate uh, to design the charger. So state of charge, depth of discharge, uh, how much it has discharged and what is the uh, capacity available means the state of charge. So these things uh, shall monitor continuously. And uh, when it comes to lead acid batteries, we also consider about the internal resistance. Sometimes the, when the voltage is available, but the capacity is not available, it drain fast. So it may be due to the internal resistance uh, uh, increased due to the sulfation uh, inside the battery. And also when we are storing the batteries, suppose we uh, import and supply battery, we store the batteries for a long period. Uh, so, but many batteries cannot be uh, stored such long. So for the lead acid batteries, usually storage time is uh, usually three months under, current, under our temperature condition. Same for the uh, lithium ion batteries, we can store that battery up to six months time. So for the service life of the batteries, uh, charging process is very important because uh, usually uh, we have traditional chargers, that means only supplying voltage, so current is not controlled. So usually for the uh, increase of service life of the battery, uh, any battery application, let us it do lithium ion, uh, nickel cadmium. Actually, that better charging mechanism is to be called as CCCV charging. CC means the constant current, CV means the constant voltage charge. So, as uh, displaced in this curve, so when the battery is fully charged from the initial state, we are using constant current charge. So, constantly providing a, a current to charge the battery, then battery voltage is going to increase up to a certain level. Then we cut off the constant current charging process. Then we shift to a, a constant voltage charging. 
that will result in from after shift, uh, shifting from constant current charge into the constant voltage charging that charging current is going to reduce so we consider when the charging current is less than one ampere the battery is fully charged so then the battery voltage is uh, constantly maintained at the same voltage so when the batteries are fully charged it is uh, also important to keep it under floating charge voltage that means uh, it will uh, give a voltage uh, just higher than the battery voltage in order to keep it uh, continuously charged also this constant current charging process is also called that bulk absorption uh, so in, during this time about 80 percent of the battery will be charged uh, during this constant current charging process. So balance will be charged under the constant voltage charging process. So with this charging process, we will move into the electric vehicles and uh, electric vehicle charging application. So usually electric vehicle has uh, two charging uh, options one is the ac charging other one is the dc charging for the ac charging there is always an onboard charge available because we are going to charge the battery anyway battery is a dc power source so we need to convert the ac power into the dc power so it will be coming before the battery that communication will be made to the bms for the dc charging application we are directly supplying uh, power to the battery through the bms because uh, we are supplying uh, through a DC power source. So usually most of the vehicles uh, have two charging options, two charging sockets. One is for the AC charging, other one is for the DC charge. So with this picture, actually, uh, we can highlight the factor that the currently it is vehicle manufacturers are uh, looking for the higher mileage. Uh, you can see now it is at least 500 kilometer vehicles. Uh, now it is manufacturing in process while initially they are only considering about uh, less than 100 kilometers something. For the EV charging, there are four modes uh, currently available. Now mode one is uh, uh, already uh, avoided because it has some protection uh, features notable. It is just uh, plug. Uh, a charging cable into the circuit and plug into the uh, vehicle for the charging purpose that is for an ac charging application so since there are no protection or communication between the charger and the power source is available now they have stopped using this mode one uh, charging for the mode two charging there is a dedicated cable available usually this is provided by the man vehicle manufacturer uh, themselves along with the vehicle so we can plug that into the plug socket and uh, use to charge uh, our electric vehicle. So since it has a uh, fuse integrated in the charging cable, it has a protection feature. Mode 3 is the, again, AC charging solution. We are providing a dedicated AC charger for charging the vehicle. Sometimes cable is available along with the uh, charging source, otherwise we can use uh, the cable uh, supplied along with the electric vehicle to do charge the battery. Mode 4 is for the DC charging, so it has a DC power source available along with the charging cable. We just need to plug into the electric vehicle. So based on the manufacturing countries, actually there are several charging standards available. Uh, so we call this uh, combined charging system CCS that is mainly for the European standard electric vehicles. Uh, other one is the Chardomo uh, charging standard that is mainly for the Japanese uh, electric vehicle manufacturer. Some other manufacturers are there, they are charging only with the AC charging sources. So EV charging function is just a plug and play solutions, but there are several uh, internal functions happening uh, during this charging procedure. It just, uh, just, it makes just not a plug and play charging uh, session uh, internally, even though we see same uh, externally. So since the, we have plugged into the uh, electric vehicle charging support to the uh, electric vehicle, so during this 
they are initializing process that will, that will detect whether the uh, plugin uh, was uh, properly connected. So there are some uh, proximity uh, sensors uh, available in this charging from the electric vehicle site as well as the charging station site. So these will monitor continuously. So if there are some loose connections, the charging process will not be started. So for the communication, uh, for the uh, European standard, they are using PLC communication. Uh, while for the Japanese standard, they are using CAN bus communication for the communication purpose. So this is uh, only for the uh, DC charging uh, option. So then it, they will, after the initializing, they will check the cable check. That means the isolation monitoring devices are available. And also they will perform the uh, short circuit test. Uh, so only after that, uh, the actual charging process is start. Actually, even though we are considering that several functions are happening, this will happen very fast uh, uh, inside the charging station. So based on the, uh, so when we are going to design the electric vehicle charging solution for each application that is based on the customer requirement actually. So if there are places that customer is going to stay more than uh, four hours or four to 16 hours something, so kind of home or workplace. So AC, we can consider this as a AC destination. So AC charge, AC so slow charging, uh, uh, facility is sufficient for this kind of customers. So suppose uh, that there is a place that customer going to spend about two hours. So kind of a restaurant or a shopping complex kind of thing. So we have to consider it as a DC charging function because we need to charge the, uh, their electric vehicle within two hours of time. So we need to have a uh, DC for a fast charging option. We need to have a DC destination for a previous application for AC destination. We can use slow AC charging to charge the batteries up to uh, eight hours. Suppose for pre uh, earlier version of Nissan Leaf uh, electric vehicle has uh, 24 kilowatt hour battery capacity. So we are, if we are going to supply three kilowatt load, so it will fully charge the batteries uh, only after eight hours. So if you have a DC destination, like if you have 20 kilowatt, 25 kilowatt range uh, DC charging uh, facility, so we can charge that battery within one or uh, two hours. So suppose the customer is going to spend 20 to 90 minutes something uh, at the place. So we have to consider it as a DC fast charge. We, we will be needing their DC fast charging facility kind of capacity at 50 kilowatt or something. So we can charge the batteries within half an hour something. So when it comes to road, we need to have a high DC power charging facility. Like uh, in globally now the electric buses are also uh, is moving fast. So for those things uh, the, at the bus, bus stop, bus station, they are installing this uh, DC high power charging application that will charge within 10 minutes or something. Uh, the bed. So based on this, that for the AC charging, only AC slow charging small unit is enough. For the DC destination, uh, we can use a DC uh, charging unit or a AC standalone unit on DC fast chargers application up to 50 kilowatt range and hyper fast charging units for this, this application. So when we are going to design the electric uh, vehicle charging unit uh, for a kind of, suppose we are considering electric vehicle charging for an apartment building or something. So we need to consider several factors because uh, not the charging sockets will be at uh, different kind of places for the different electric vehicles. For the uh, AC charging, uh, so it is in the front. For the charger room application like Nissan Leaf, we have the uh, charging socket uh, assembled in the front. And uh, for the uh, Mitsubishi electric vehicles, we have it at, at the side. So based on that, uh, we need to consider at uh, what position, how the parking system should be uh, designed uh, 
along with the uh, electric vehicle type we are going to install so, and also based on the electric vehicles uh, mostly coming into that place so in the electric vehicle charging so we have a dedicated donor for a particular EV charging so he can allow access to other customers to use the uh, electric vehicle charging unit uh, installed at their premises to different kind of uh, procedures like uh, RFID card, providing RFID card, as well as the mobile apps also available uh, for authorizing the energy storage system. And also, as mentioned in the previous slide, currently uh, they are looking to increase the mileage of the electric vehicle while uh, increasing the battery capacity. So since uh, lithium ion battery technology is getting increased, so energy density is going to be increased. So we can uh, we are getting uh, much more energy through the same uh, space. So as mentioned in this graph, now they are looking for more than 100 kilometer range with the uh, battery bank availability of uh, 70 kilowatt hours for the premium car range also that is get going to increase uh, with the increase of energy storage so as a result of that uh, mainly uh, globally now we are people are looking if we have such a large energy storage uh, we are currently using only for the transportation so why can't we use this uh, uh, battery storage uh, in order to power our home loads uh, when the blackout condition occurs so then it comes to the, uh, another technology called vehicle to grid or vehicle to home for smart uh, for making the smart grid so currently electric vehicles if we allow to use anytime so it means make uh, unmanaged gb charging uh, during daytime they are using the electric vehicle and again they are plugged in to charge the electric vehicle during the uh, night peak covers so that make uh, the grid uh, condition worse un under this scenario so if we uh, allow them for the smart tv charging solution so they can when the solar power is uh, available during daytime so we can uh, ask the or program the electric vehicle or electric charger to charge the electric vehicle during this time or without charging the night time we can program the in order to start charging the during the off peak hours while considering the charging only we can also uh, allow the electric vehicle to uh, feed back into the home load so feed back into the grid from the stored energy in the electric vehicle so uh, during the day peak cover and the uh, night peak cover we can allow uh, stored energy in the electric vehicle battery to supply to the home load so supply to the grid so that uh, makes the uh, vehicle to grid uh, technology we currently we are only considering about grid to vehicle uh, taking power from the grid and charge the battery again uh, we can also consider about vehicle to be supplying uh, storage energy in the battery to supply to the uh, in a grid or home loads during the uh, peak hours so currently these uh, solutions and technologies are uh, increasing for these applications because as mentioned in the previous uh, slide there are a lot of uh, battery energy storage is going to happen for the electric vehicles so we can utilize this power uh, to supply our home load. So supply to the grid during peak hours. So that means uh, flat allowing to utility service providers to flatten the uh, load curve and uh, manage the grid instability accordingly. Okay, uh, that's all from the presentation uh, and slide point of view so that we have discussed about the integration of the solar pv system and energy storage uh, while supplying while operating under grid support functions and uh, sub, uh, support the grid to flatten the uh, load curve as well as the increasing of uh, usage of electric vehicles again uh, 
while with the smart charging functions uh, to avoid charging during the peak hours and also rather than charging from the peak hours managing to uh, feed into the grid for energy storage in the battery uh, for the grid, home loads and grid during the load peak hours so that's all from the presentation uh, so if you have any questions you can raise uh, as mentioned by the moderator previously okay good evening uh, hope you all hear me properly yes engineer mahesh okay thank you i am mahesh udyanga from building service engineering section and committee so now we are going to start q and a session uh, our first question is uh, has the utility provided a inverter performance standard to manage these controls for the every installer to do it consistently sorry uh, katun can uh, has can the, the best? okay 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 i will repeat it has the utility provided a inverter performance standard to manage these controls for the every installer to do it consistently yes actually these things are currently happening uh, from the in sri lanka point of view cb is uh, working on that uh, along with the sri lanka sustainable energy authority so i think first they need to check this uh, that uh, previously mentioned parameters are available for the older uh, older solar inverters currently used by the uh, installers in sri lanka Okay, thank you. Next, second question is: Some parties say that we increase the harmonics when we connect multiple inverters. What do you think? How this affect the quality of power? Uh, yes, actually, we have seen a lot of such cases, uh, the harmonic cases uh, with the integration of solar PV system. So, actually, that uh, for the any of the solar inverter for the test certificates they are is, they are is available that uh, harmonic test reports currently it should be uh, less than uh, 3% or 5% uh, when the at, at output power uh, uh, even at 30% or 50% something so these are mostly available with the solar inverters but even there are going to happen some harmonic issues actually we have experienced harmonics from the solar inverter side as well as from the load side also so it is uh, sometimes it is going to be a difficult questions to identify where, where where is actually the harmonic problem is going to happen but as mentioned here definitely it is going to affect the quality of the uh, power uh, if we are going to uh, integrate the many solar inverters with higher harmonic levels next question is uh, what are the regulation imposed by sls ea for energy storage and hybrid systems yes uh, sustainable energy authority has imposed some uh, new regulation for the integration of energy storage uh, and energy storage for the hybrid system there are several uh, applications uh, they have uh, distrib- uh, su- submitted uh, for the solar inverters in order to fill and submit uh, for them so they are uh, so they are going to evaluate those application and uh, give, given the uh, authority to install the hybrid system okay next question is uh, just for information with effective from 14 february 2020 network operators is, uh, in western australia are arranging to shut the exporting the energy under the emergency situation by connecting the inverter to the second element of the meter as one of the method and the other method use is using internet to control the inverter could there be an issue in sri lanka too in the future if these are not uh, thought about it now yes uh, that's uh, exactly correct in the australia at the several locations uh, they are putting that uh, limitation not to export the solar pv energy in, into the grid Uh, so if they are found anyone is doing that they are going to impose the penalty also so 
that is also that uh, in order to control this uh, supply and demand during the daytime uh, when the solar pv energy going to uh, integrate more and more there as mentioned in the previously that uh, grid grid stability maintenance is in question so in order to control that operation so the utility service providers definitely will put some limitations there but uh, that uh, uh, in Australia, they are allowing to use this energy storage uh, other than feed into the grid. So the, with that, actually, that we can store that excess energy produced during daytime uh, in the battery bank and uh, then use at during the uh, night time. So that will allow again to not to go in vain this excess power as well as uh, reducing the effect on the grid. Okay, thank you. Next question is, what is the importance of anti-island in protection, testing and effect? Uh, is it possible to test in Sri Lanka? Yes, actually it is an uh, important aspect of protection. Suppose uh, when we are going to detect an island in situation, maybe means that uh, utility service provider disconnect the grid uh, for some time for a maintenance work. So if uh, the solar inverter going to supply uh, to the grid during that time, so there are some problems for the protection side for the utility service providers, maintenance workers or something. So that's is uh, that's why it is very important. Again, uh, we can test that uh, protection feature in Sri Lanka too. Okay, thank you. Next question is, as per your opinion, what are the options and applications Sri Lanka has with integrating energy storage? Uh, yes, uh, I think I have uh, shared those slides uh, during the presentation time. Uh, so there are energy storage application. We can uh, work on several terminologies based on the based on where we are going to install the battery bank, whether from the PV panel side or from integrated along with the inverter uh, from the AC side as a AC coupled system. So. There are several options available for integrating energy that is from the residential scale as well as from the uh, industrial and commercial scale. Uh, also, we can uh, use the energy storage for the uh, utility scale as well. Okay, thank you. Next question and, is, uh, what is the... another, another thing for the industrial purpose, actually, now the power is a critical application. So they, are, they will be having a, uh, diesel generator as a backup power. So until the diesel generator is going to start, they may be using a UPS solution. So so we can uh, avoid all these units and uh, with the, in, also again, if they are planning to install a solar PV system, so we can uh, take all these units to a single position uh, in order to control and monitor like uh, solar PV with energy storage uh, in order to supply it for their power without using this UPS and uh, diesel generators. Okay, thank you. Next question. Uh, what is the Sri Lankan limitation of connecting battery storage to a PV system? Should it be less than the PV capacity? Uh, no, actually that uh, energy storage for residential application, uh, the, we are not allowing to battery to feed into the grid. Uh, for hybrid application, we are just designing the battery bank for the home loads only. We are designing the battery bank and allowing the battery to be used only for the hour usage when there is a, a backup, uh, when there is a blackout happens or, or such kind of situation only, we can use the uh, storage energy into our home loads. So it is not going to uh, supply to the grid from the batteries. So I think these Thanks. regulations also will come into play as if we are going to store, use the utility scale uh, storage system. So when we are going to supply uh, to the grid from the batteries, then there are uh, regulation will come into play. Okay, thank you. Yeah, in your view, what will be the most popular electric storage method in 2040? Uh, where cobalt use in battery production? Yes, uh, as mentioned uh, in the battery technologies, there are several battery technologies uh, globally using as well as new technologies also uh, introducing by several manufacturers. So as mentioned in the my previous uh, that slide, actually 
that currently the lithium ion storage is uh, playing a major role uh, for the, the energy storage for the solar pv system okay thank you uh, next question is what is the future of sodium ion batteries Ah uh, yes, uh, I think again the same uh, same uh, question kind of thing that uh, battery technologies are getting increased uh, because people are looking for a, a higher energy density with the mostly available uh, chemical materials. So that is actually developing market. Uh, so previously we had nickel, cadmium, lead acid batteries. Now we have many technologies, and in future there will be uh, much more uh, technologies will be available. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is: How about the lighting arrester? Is it compulsory? Uh, is battery storage uh, legalized in Sri Lanka? Yes, uh, actually, that uh, lighting arresters are uh, still we are using from the PV panel side and uh, from the grid side. So I think that uh, for the energy storage, uh, we don't see any lighting arrester uh, is uh, required because maybe we are uh, connecting the battery just in the shorter distance uh, for the inverter. Okay, next question is, how can we manage battery's waste? Is there any good way available? So, sorry, I didn't get the question. How can we manage battery's waste? Is there any good way available? Batteries? Uh, waste waste yeah waste ah uh, yes actually that's uh, recycling of the batteries are currently uh, happening uh, mainly in sri lanka also there are some uh, recycling plants available for the lead acid uh, batteries and uh, also lithium for the lithium it is uh, in uh, actually currently uh, working on several countries for the recycling process uh, purpose and uh, usage using again this uh, recycled material Okay. Uh, next question is how to optimize the uh, shadowing effect on PV panels using connection of PV strings. Ah uh, yes, for, for the several manufacturers, there are several technologies available. Uh, earlier, they were using uh, from the PV side uh, the PV optimizers. Uh, now it is uh, outdated. Now even the inverter has its technologies uh, with uh, more more MPPTs for the inverter, so we can uh, reduce the effect of shadows. Okay, thank you. Next question is uh, really impressive. If we adopted the energy storage in mass scale in uh, in further, is there any solution to dispose the waste in our island? Uh, yes, actually, that is again uh, with the what is the battery technology that we are going to use. Uh, if it is a lead acid, uh, there are local recycling plants available currently. For the other technologies uh, in Sri Lanka, not available, but in other countries, they are working on that. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is: In your view, what will be the most popular electric storage method in? 2040. Uh, sorry, I think uh, this uh, question is repeated, but uh, there are uh, some tag in the question. Uh, yeah. So I will uh, repeat the question again. In your view, what will be the most popular electric storage method in 2040? Where cobalt use in battery production? How can we manage battery space? Is there any good way available? I think same question. Yes, same. Okay, I will go for. Uh, next question. Typical production cost per unit uh, unit of a solar with battery storage system is specified for a five kilowatt rooftop solar system with battery storage. Typical production cost per unit. Okay, uh, that means uh, maybe it's asking for a five kilowatt total cost uh, with the storage. Actually. That is uh, based on the inverter you are going to use and the battery technology because for the battery, for the cost of exclusive solutions are also available for the inverter and the battery for both. So currently, uh, I don't have an idea because the, due to the current situation in Sri Lanka also prices are increasing for all the material. 
so till it is tend to increase now actually previously i, I can remember uh, some month back it was about um, 1.5 million for a 5 kilowatt system with the energy storage okay thank you uh, next question is during vehicle bto grid mode of operation in evs vehicle movements also need to be managed to effectively manage the load curve properties as shown in the slide isn't it or any smart management method available yes uh, exactly uh, that's it. that need to be managed uh, as mentioned in the slides also so uh, currently there are no regulations or uh, management methods available actually uh, with the increase of the uh, electric vehicle population population in sri lanka and uh, allowing to use this vehicle to be technologies there will be some policies and the uh, management uh, of energy uh, usage will be come into play in future definitely okay thank you our next question is in sri lanka context within bracket considering ceb power grid downtime uh, given a choice between solar storage plus diesel generator power which would be more feasible yes uh, that's why i mentioned in the previous slide we have to consider three factors uh, when, when we are going to decide the uh, energy source uh, like uh, reliability security of the power supply and the economic concept and the environmental concept so we have to we just not consider at uh, one point so as i mentioned from the energy security point of view solar is not a reliable solution uh, unless we use the energy storage uh, unless uh, we use with energy storage so in that case the diesel generator is uh, feasible if we are not going to use the solar pv with the storage so from the environmental impact of view that uh, definitely uh, diesel generate is not a good choice we need to go for a renewable energy solution okay thank you uh, our next question is uh, regarding to the uh, present situation is this battery uh, coupled system would be economical for the customer uh, is this g2v method would be affected to the battery health of the vehicles uh yes i will first answer the second question uh, that uh, definitely that battery life cycle is depend battery service life is depends on the number of cycles we are using so it is it will definitely affect the health of the vehicle that means uh, uh, reduce the we are considering only one cycle per day so we can consider the number of cycles uh, we can use the battery so we can de decide the health uh, before you before letting our electric vehicle store it to use for this application so otherwise uh, other question uh, i think i forgot uh, i will repeat it uh, Re okay regarding to the present situation is this a uh, battery uh, couple system would be economical for the customer yes uh, actually now cb also has increased uh, in introduced the time of unit tar tariff mechanism so with this uh, actually uh, that even for the newly uh, newly commissioning electrical supply system that customer has to go for a time of finish the tariff is structure that means during daytime there is a separate uh, tariff and during the peak covers uh, there is an increase uh, tariff increase rate and during the off peak covers there is lesser tariff so if we have a system design uh, solar and solar with the storage so we can uh, reduce uh, power reduce take in supply from the grid during daytime as well as during the peak covers so only letting uh, power uh, supply from the grid uh, to the off peak covers so with that we can re reduce and uh, the uh, uh, re reduce our electricity bill uh, only because we are using power from the grid only during the off peak covers which has a lesser rate okay thank you uh, next question is what will be the cost difference and benefits of lithium ion batteries against lead acid batteries what will be the life span of those batteries yes uh, currently actually uh, for when we consider the uh, batteries with the same capacity for currently for the 48 volt 100 h uh, suppose we consider it as a 4.8 kilowatt hour battery currently in 
it is available at uh, in Sri Lanka rupee 400,000 something. Uh, if we are going to use the same capacity, uh, lead acid battery, we can find it at, uh, so we have lead acid batteries are available at 12 volt. We have to connect uh, four number of such batteries to in order to form a 48 volt, 100 age battery bank. So we can find it at uh, 200,000 something that all, the price is almost double. But uh, when it comes to the lifetime, uh, so traditional lead acid batteries have uh, less than 1,000 uh, thousand cycle life uh, for, uh, at uh, suppose 80% depth of discharge. Uh, for the same, for the lithium ion batteries uh, with the same capacity has more than uh, 6,000, 7,000 cycle life at the uh, same depth of discharge. So when it comes to the, uh, so, so lead acid batteries, we, if we are using a cycle per day, we are discharging and charging uh, one cycle per day. So we will be having thousand days. Suppose we are having a three hours of uh, lifetime. But for the same capacity, lithium ion battery, we can use up to uh, 20 years, more than uh, 15 years we can go. So we have, for every three years, we have to replace the lead acid battery band. So we are replacing the uh, lead acid battery bank five times during uh, the lifetime of the lead acid battery. So when we consider the overall picture, so lithium ion battery is the dead solution. Thank you. Uh, next question is, uh, would it be feasible option to supply the grid with stored power considering the power losses in and out from the battery? What would be the payback in such scenario? Yes, uh, actually when we are going to use a uh, uh, lithium ion battery for as of energy storage so our uh, we are investing uh, more money uh, than the typical grid tight system but uh, during the power uh, power outage scenario uh, so we, we we can use if we had the energy storage uh, system uh, integrated with our existing solar power system so we can use the, uh, that is stored power in the battery or using this again, if it is a daytime, we can use again the solar power generator also to supply for our formula. So that actually based on the uh, application we are using. So maybe for a household application, uh, we, may, may, we may not find it as a feasible option, but when we come to the industrial application, so the production process, that manufacturing uh, production continuity should continue even though at the power crisis situation. For such application, actually, that will be a feasible solution. Okay, thank you. Next question is, is there any regulation in Sri Lanka to use hybrid inverter in domestic applications? Uh, yes, uh, actually, that regulations are already uh, released. Uh, so we can you can anyone can check with the sustainable energy authority they have uh, proposed uh, several system which can uh, you can use the hybrid install system so currently it is happening in sri lanka most are currently installing hybrid system uh, instead of uh, traditional grid type systems Okay, thank you. Uh, actually, this uh, gentleman uh, joined uh, mid of the presentation. So he asked, sorry, I joined at midway. The use of regeneration energy is most uh, sustainable, yet it's uh, not economical for solar panels for all region. Any solution for address the above? Sorry, I think I could not get the question correctly. Use of, uh, I will, I will. Uh, Please. Repeat it. Use of regeneration energy is more uh, sustainable, yet it is not economical for solar panels for all region. Any sol solution for address the above? Uh, no, maybe that uh, it is not actually. We cannot say that is not a feasible uh, solution. Actually, that uh, based on the rate currently CEB offering for the. Uh, for the export energy from the uh, existing power system so but uh, but the recent uh, material cost increase due to the uh, global situation has affected the current scenario but otherwise actually that uh, return of the investment for a solar inverter can cover within four to five years but uh, and also that agreement for the this solar system has uh, will be signed by the cb and loco for the 20 years so that is actually that uh, still a feasible uh, option to go for a solar system. 
Okay, thank you. Our next question is how to solve very high uh, neutral to earth voltage existing in off grid inverters. Is it safe to operate like that? Uh, yes, this uh, neutral voltage problem is uh, we are also uh, experiencing uh, in several sites. So actually that is uh, mainly we, we have to use a good uh, earthing system uh, there. So we, in Sri Lanka, the CB recommended to uh, get the earth resistance to less than five uh, ohms. So we need to make sure that we are getting the, that thing correctly. And uh, other things uh, we have to use from the inverter side uh, when it is generating the when it is converting the DC to AC power output, so they have this control this uh, output uh, voltages and the uh, limitations from the inverter side. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is: Can all type batteries be used in four charging method? Sorry, which type battery? Four. Uh, I will repeat it. Can all type batteries be used in four charging modes? I think this I could not get the question. Uh... Okay, I will go for the next question. Uh, can you give an idea on uh, reusing uh, dismantle electric car batteries to store energy in domestic TV? Uh, actually, for the dismantle electric car batteries, uh, it is widely using currently, but it, you need to check uh, what time of battery you are using. If it is uh, lithium ion batteries, you need to be very ca careful about the protection features I have mentioned in the pre presentation. If it is fully dead and we are going to recharge the battery, there can be explosions and uh, uh, fire risk is there. So, definitely. Definitely, there must be a BMS uh, uh, BMS use along with the lithium ion batteries. For other batteries, actually, there are uh, recon reconditioning uh, mechanisms are available. So we can recondition the battery and uh, use for any other application. So these uh, things are also currently available in Sri Lanka too. OK, thank you. Uh, next question is how to solve very high uh, same question sorry uh, next question is this is Lehman's question i just want to know are there local manufacturing of batteries lithium ion or lead has acid yeah, currently local manufacturers are available for the lead acid batteries uh, that is again not for the uh, I mentioned about the lead acid batteries. There are several types available, AGM, uh, gel type, uh, tubular type, and uh, uh, what you call uh, other type battery. So the, we must use uh, tubular type lead acid batteries uh, for the solar power application. Otherwise, uh, we, uh, the other batteries will be degraded within one or two years uh, for the application. So tubular battery manufacturing is still not happening in Sri Lanka. So other AGM type batteries, and other lead acid batteries are uh, manufacturing in Sri Lanka currently. Okay, thank you. Uh, that's all avail uh, questions available in chat box. However, based on the time available, we can we can go for rice and question. And if you have any further questions, please use rice and uh, function. Then we will allow you to direct the question to engineer Manu. Yeah, I think. Uh... Uh, engineer uh, Mahesh, uh, Mr. Harsha Disarnayak is there, uh, who has been raised his hands uh, from the beginning of the Q&A session. Mr. Harsha, you can go for your question. Uh, thank you, Engineer Ishan. Uh, I want to know about, uh, I heard that uh, EV vehicles, uh, when we're going to charge it, is it a recommend to use rapid chargers for long uh, duration of uh, health? For the battery or normal charging l2 or l1 yes actually that uh, dc power charging is recommended actually again that the vehicle type and the battery technology in that vehicle they are going to use so as i mentioned earlier that uh, for the better service life of the battery we need to have this ccc ccv charging option starting with the constant current charging that means a high ampere 
charging and then moved into the uh, constant voltage charging where the current will be uh, reduced. So that application actually, if there is a charging mechanism that will, uh, that means high ampere rate charging until the battery capacity reaches 100%, that is going to be dangerous. So actually with the proper BMS that will cease constant current charging will be cut off at the point of uh, battery capacity reach the 80%. So from the 80% to 100%, it will be uh, going to use the constant voltage charging, which means a slow charging process. So that is available and uh, recommended by the most uh, electric vehicle manufacturers. Thank you. We have Mr. Indika Disanayaka who has raised their hand. Mr. Indika, you can go for your question now. Uh, thank you. Now, uh, with the current trend in uh, increasing use of solar PV, uh, say after service life of about 20 years, there will be a heap of uh, redundant solar PV panels. Is there any uh, technology to uh, re reuse them or dispose of? At, the, at present? Uh, yes, uh, actually, currently, there are oh, many, most of the solar panel manufacturers are giving that uh, product warranty and uh, as well as the performance warranty as a separate warranty factor. So, with this scenario, they are recommending that it is, uh, we can use the solar panel more than 20 years. So, after that, only we need to have, we need to replace the existing solar panels with the new one. Sorry, my question was, uh, what are we going to do with the uh, uh, discarded solar panels? Yes, uh, as uh, same as for the battery technologies, uh, that most of the manufacturers are working on that uh, recycling of the, so how to recycle this solar PV system uh, for getting the silicon uh, and other material. So still not, uh, there's a exact solution, exact uh, solutions and answer for this case. I think we have one more uh, rice ran person uh, that uh, his name mentioned as iPhone. Uh, you can direct the question. Uh, hello, is it uh, possible to convert the existing uh, on grid solar system to a, a PV, uh, sorry, a grid uh, hybrid type uh, inverter? Uh, yes, uh, there, there are several, as mentioned in the, my slides, there are th three topologies available, hybrid system and the DC couple system and the AC couple system. So we can use currently uh, widely used the uh, AC couple system. We can uh, just use the battery inverter along with the battery that's uh, compatible with this application and uh, make the existing system into a hybrid system. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you very much. I think uh, no more I sign questions. So uh, now we came into latter part of the program and I will invite the engineer Kaushal to conclude the session. Engineer Kaushal, uh, you are not uh, audible to us.
Ginia Kaushal. You are not terrible. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me now. Okay, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Mahesh. Uh, well, wow, it was quite an informative and interactive session. I believe uh, that we all have to think out of the box and approach differently to the power crisis uh, that we are facing at the moment. Uh, hope you all have gained knowledge uh, for solution as we cannot sustain without uninterrupted electricity. Um, as we are reaching to the end of today's webinar, I'm here to present the vote of thanks on behalf of the uh, organizing committee. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to offer up our profound gratitude uh, to the guest speaker today, uh, Engineer Manoj Taraka, for his valuable time and enlightening us with his knowledge. <laughs> Then I would like to thank ISL staff for facilitating and arranging the webinar successfully. Finally, yet importantly, our sincere gratitude goes to all of you for actively participation in this forum. Okay, before winding up, I would like to invite you for upcoming public lectures uh, and other events organized by Building Service Engineering Sectional Committee for the session 2021-22 and we will notify further details in future. Um, well then, we are looking forward to see you all in next event. Wishing you a lovely evening without any power interruptions. Stay safe, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you.